Hey everyone, this is Crypto Dream. I'm here to bring you more information today. And I've been doing research about money and different things that might be worth your time. I, I'm a big fan of Joyage. I like collecting things. I, I try to read so I can be educated for you guys. So you guys don't have to go to all the places I'm willing to go. Today, we're going to go through some of the information that I've had for you. And we're going to start off with Gesham's Law. You can find this information on encyclopedia.com. Gesham's law is a principle that says bad money drives out good and can be applied to currency markets. What does it tie into cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency, currency, come on. Sir Thomas Grisham lived in 1519 to 1579 and wrote about the value and minting of coins while working with it, while working as a financier and later founded the Royal Exchange of the City of London. When Harry VIII changed the composition of the English shilling, replacing a substantial portion of silver with base metals, citizens separated the English shilling coins and hoarded the coins containing more silver, which were worth more than their face value. Both currency types were liquid and available simultaneously, for use as acceptable forms of exchange. Gesham observed that bad money was driving out the good money from circulation. Bad money is a currency with equal or less value than its face value. Good money is the potential for a greater value than its face value. People who people will choose to use bad money first and hold on to good money. The Scottish economist Henry Dunning McCloyd attributed this law to Gresham in the 19th century. What we're seeing is that if something has more intrinsic value, people are going to hold on to it and just use the one that's worth less. If I have a pile of gold and I have a pile of money and they have the equal value under the law and under just society in general, people will hold on to the gold because they see the value of the gold more than the paper. So they'll spend all their paper. One example I personally have is Wait a second. Two dollar bills. I will spend so many ones rather than spend my two dollar bills. And that's not even intrinsically worth. When all currency units are legally mandated to be recognized at the same face value, the traditional version of Gresham law operates. In the absence of effectively enforced tender Law. Gresham law operates in the reverse as good money drives out bad money out of circulation where people can decline to accept less valuable money. If you're a merchant or something, you're going to most definitely want the higher grade of the money than the lesser grade. An example of today's currency is in 1982, the U.S. government changed the composition of the penny to contain 97.5% zinc. This change made pre 1982 pennies worth more than the post-1982 counterparts, while the face value remained the same. Due to the debasement of the currency and resulting inflation, copper prices rose from an average of 0.6662 a pound in 1982 to $3.597 a pound. In 2006, the purchasing power of a penny falling by nearly 80%. So in less than 15 years, 80%. While we're talking about historical events, you guys might have heard of a movie coming out, Napoleon. I do not have all the education when it comes to Napoleon. I've heard different things from different people. I would really need to do my own research into him. But one thing I've been learning about recently is that he was for sound money. When Bonaparte took the consulship, the condition of physical affairs was appalling. The government was bankrupt and immense debt was unpaid. The further collection of taxes seemed impossible. The assessments were in hopeless confusion. At the first cabinet council, Bonaparte was asked what he intended to do. He replied, I will pay cash or pay nothing. From this time, he conducted all his operations on the basis, on this basis. When the first great European coalition was formed against the empire, Napoleon was hard-pressed financially, and it was proposed to resort to paper money. But he wrote to this matter, 
While I live, I will never resort to irredeemable paper. He never did, and France, under his under this determination, commanded all the gold she needed. This kind of ties in is that paper money can be devalued to nothing. The more you print off of a currency, the more it has, the less scarce it is. And if there's trillions and trillions and trillions of available money for both you and the purchaser or you and the seller, do you think you'll be one to trade for pennies on the dollar? Or do you think you'll have to like pay more money for the same goods? You'd want to, you'd want more money for those goods. And when it comes to gold and silver, it's always put a limitation on how much you can print. Because when you had gold as the standard, it was uh, the gold standard, you could only print as much in ratio to how much gold the actual government had. So there's a limitation to how much can be printed. Bitcoin has a limitation to how much they can mine, how many can be created. And our paper used to have the gold standard so it does not have the limitations as once did, and the repercussions have been self-evident. We've printed trillions of dollars, and every year inflation is worse and worse. And it just seems to get, be getting worse and worse, to the point where the Federal Reserve questions if there will even be a soft landing. And many are concerned. What is the government going to do if they do not have... If the, if the debt becomes too great for them to be able to bear? One option they have and has been increasingly looked into is what we call a CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. And a central bank digital currency is a currency that the government is able to control. It's instant, so you can transfer instantly. It is also to where you can possibly put different effects on the currency. For instance, if you had money in your account, they could instantly withdraw it. They could instantly fund it. They could put expiration dates. There's so much capability, it's so trackable, everything, huge amounts of benefits alongside very great risk. Governments that introduce a CBDC enable a war on cash and cryptocurrencies. The virtual currencies and individual monetary units convertible into paper money at a variable rate determined by supply and demand but their use and value are not monitored or guaranteed by any agency. A government would want a CBDC for the control. Tyrants would love a CBDC. They don't necessarily care for cryptocurrencies because it's beyond their control. They can't monitor it the same. They can't guarantee it. And there is value for a government being able to guarantee the currency. Many people believe that, I believe there was a quote that said, I care not who writes the laws, but who controls the money. And that's because even if someone writes the laws, if you have the money, you have all the power. All, he who has all the gold makes all the rules. This is a very powerful thing. That article, again, was by Investopedia by Adam Hayes, May 30th, 2023, reviewed by Erica Rusher and Suzanne. If you are wiring money domestically, the funds will usually appear within 24 hours. This is due to expedited Funds Availability Act, EFAA, which requires financial institutions to process domestic wire transfers in a single business day. However, the time it takes a wire transfer to be processed can vary depending on several factors such as the destination country, the currency being transferred, the amount being transferred, and the time of day the transfer is initiated. For instance, international wire transfers can take up to five business days to process. Five business days. Bitcoin, whatever else, even some of the slower cryptocurrencies you can have within hours. Many don't have the gas fees like Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum has gas fees. But like Bitcoin is so man minute how much it costs to transfer compared to what a wire transfer would be. So cryptocurrency has an advantage there. So that would be the money that would be preferred for many people, especially people with family outside their local area. I would hate for me to need to send money to my kids and it take five business days when they're starving. I'm just being honest. Just a quick headline. Reuters. Study shows 130 countries exploring. Just a title. Study shows 130 countries exploring central bank digital currencies. By Mark Jones. June 28th, 2023. 130 countries. It doesn't look like very many countries are afraid of this. But let's look at this. This is Atlantic Council. This is a CBDC tracker. 
pink. It looks like 11 launched green, 21 pilot, light blue, 33 in development, dark blue, 46 research, kind of a mustard tan, 16 inactive, and two canceled. There's only two that's been canceled. These two have been canceled. Inactive. Research. Development. See the U.S.? Piloted. And launched. There is so much interest in this. And people don't want to be left behind. Countries don't want to be left behind because people have always fought technology like assembly lines, internet. But with this, this is something that is just so powerful. It can't be ignored. I mean, <laughs> the entire world's kind of looking into this. A lot of banks, though, they're going to have issues with this because the banks are in a very difficult situation because the banks have to worry about how they're going to make money off of this. Because right now they have employees, they have fees that they can charge from place to place. So they got to have to figure out how, they, how they're going to operate in this system, how they're going to make money. There's other ways for them to make money when it comes to fees. I'm sure loans and everything, they'll have a way. When a company deposits cash with a bank, the bank records a liability on its balance sheet. A liability. Representing the obligation to repay the depositor, usually on demand. There's obviously going to be different situations because if I put money in a bank and then I go to withdraw it, they they can give it to me instantly or not. Usually there's a limitation on how much I can withdraw a day. I have to ask permission for my own money, basically. Simultaneously, the bank records the cash as an asset, a liability and an asset. The cash held by the central bank is a liability because if the commercial bank goes back to the central bank and gives back the cash, the central bank will have to give back the loans or government bonds. Whenever a customer deposits money into his or her account, the bank views it as a liability because the bank owes the deposits to its customer and is obligated to return the funds when the customer wishes to withdraw the money by any means. A liability, a liability is a risk, and an asset is something. An asset is a property owned by a person or a company regarded as having value and availability to meet debts, commitments, or legacies. Um, I, I have in my frame of mind at this moment the asset is like a house, a building, um, valuables, just valuables. Many of these banks will see the right on the wall when it comes to all this is more Americans are joining the cashless economy. How many people you know that only use their cards? How many people you know only use cash? Most people nowadays only use cards. Whether it's their credit card, debit card, whatever. Which makes it what makes it interesting for the banks is that if you're only using card, it's just numbers on the computer screen. They don't they don't have to hand you or show you the cash. It could be in their vaults. It could not be in their vaults. All you know the difference of is the number on a screen. And if you look at bank runs and everything, bank run was when people withdrew their money or gold from a bank. And when everyone rushed in, because banks are, were required to only have 10%, if they only had 10% of what they loaned out or the people's funds, then they wouldn't have money to repay to the people. Americans have become more likely to say they don't use cash for purchases in a typical week. In 2005, you see that all or almost of their purchases, 24. Some of their purchases, 51. None of the purchases, 24. So it's pretty balanced here, 2015. So when we fast forward to 2022, I mean, that's still over almost two years ago. It went 14, 44, 41. This number right here is more than likely going to get bigger, especially as older generations are no longer here because they have some sense of the necessity of having cash on hand. They haven't experienced the hardships of bank runs like, I mean, we've experienced some hardships of bank runs, but they experienced the Great Depression and many, many difficulties that still has enough bearing on their mind that they need to have some kind of asset in case of emergency. You might think, well, if it's been that long, then maybe it'll go even longer. Maybe we'll ever have to worry about it. we're an advanced technology or society and we don't we don't need to have cash anymore. I still think that even if we don't need cash, 
we still need some kind of dependability. We need, we don't need something. I'm for Bitcoin and everything, but the reason I am is because there is a limitation on it to where how much can be made. We do not need things to be infinitely created because it devalues our assets. Going back to the U.S. development of a CBDC. Coindesk, November 7th, 2023. Jesse Hamilton. U.S. Federal Reserve's bar holds line on central bank needing stable coin powers. Stable coin, generally, is a cryptocurrency that is also tied to a currency, a government's currency. Um, we have USDC, for instance, that is tied to the U.S. dollar. So a dollar of USD is a dollar in cash, and a cash dollar is USDC. Now, there's like maybe 1% difference, but it's to be stable and equal each other. Stable coin is not too far from a CBDC, but there is differences for sure. Many, many of them are privatized, meaning that they're not made by the government. They're made by, you know, retail or whatever. The U.S. Federal Reserve needs to regulate and enforce law against stablecoin issuers. The Federal Reserve Vice Chairman and Supervision Michael Barr making the federal oversight argument that has been the major sticking point as the U.S. of Representatives debates legislation. We haven't made a decision on whether it would be a good idea, he said, or he repeated the recent promises of the central bank that it won't move on a digital dollar unless the White House and Congress clearly authorize establishing such a thing. I would really hope that they would not overstep and do such a thing. We have this illusion of democracy in many ways. And I say illusion because it's debatable, right? Each state has a vote, but they only have so many votes per state. It's based on how many people are in that area, in that state. But it does not count how many legal, quote-unquote, citizens are in that state. It counts how many people are in that state, how many children. Uh, it's not based on how many voters. It's based on how many people, which could be infants or adults, whatever. The entire state gets that. And a lot of times you'll have a county, and whatever the majority of that county is gets that vote. Of course, each state has their own varying rules. But you could have... S you have some states where you have 49% of a state vote one way and the entire state votes with the 51%. And then another state where it votes 97% one way and then only 3% the other way and it get the vote. There's such a huge difference in how many of the citizens voted a certain way, but it's irrelevant. It's not based on the overall population of a country. It's based on the overall vote of the state. So if you have one percentage of a state voting one way and another vote, another percentage of a state, the state will vote over its overall percentage in some states for that person or whatever. But it will not count the overall number of people. It could be based on electives. It could be on population. But there's different degrees to where it can vary and there's different systems people have of getting votes that might make it to where even though someone has more actual votes, they don't win. I'm still more eager for the people we voted for, the things we voted for to actually have some effect other than just some entity that wasn't voted for. This is CNN Business. Elizabeth Warren crypto giants are collapsing under the weight of their own fraud by Alison Moreau, CNN. January 25th, 2023, almost a year ago. Senator Warren, a longtime crypto critic, warned recent turbulence in the digital asset space will only continue unless a host of regulators strengthen protections for investors. For all their talk of innovation and financial inclusion, crypto industry giants from FTX to Celsius to Voyager are collapsing under the weight of their own fraud, deceit and gross mismanagement, she said. And when they sink, they will... They take a lot of honest investors down with them, Warren. Added during the comments Wednesday, an event hosted by American Economics Liberties Project, Americans for Financial Reform. So, she's talking about fraud. 
if you look at the banks, how many banks have gotten fines for doing things that they shouldn't have been doing? How much fraud? How many things would the average citizen consider fraud that the banks do, that they get away with every single day? It's really disgusting that she would even dare lump FTX into this group because FTX was paying for so many politicians. SBF, bribing politicians. SBF, bribing politicians. He was the second highest, from all articles I've read, supporter of Biden. He affected ours. She goes on to say, crypto fraud is a big problem, but it's okay. Crypto fraud is a big problem, but it's one we can fix, Warren said. The SEC in the past two years has made a good start by keeping crypto volatility out of the traditional bank system and preventing Bitcoin exchange traded funds from hitting the market, she said. And without naming Bankman Fried directly, Warren praised the SEC for charging crypto crooks with defrauding ordinary investors. But the SEC can't fix it all. The SEC has been picking and choosing who they go after. They had no problem going after SRP, and they have no problem going after anyone else. It all appears that they've been selective about who they choose, and in every step of the way, they've just been hurting the industry more and more. But it took... They didn't ever, ever really go after SBF, and he was the main culprit. He was the one they should have had their eyes on from the beginning. This is all not financial advice. This is my personal opinion. I would love to be corrected in the comments. All our regulators need to get in the game, Warren said, calling on environmental and banking officials to step up. Crypto mining firms are polluting communities. They're straining power grids and they're driving up utility costs in the communities from Texas to New York, she said. Both the Department of Energy and the Environmental Protection Agency have the authority to require crypto miners to disclose their energy use and their environmental impact. I would like to know her her finances. I'd like to know where she's getting money from because she's getting more money than she is from the government. So what's going on? And if not her, many other politicians. And when it comes to energy, Bitcoin is Bitcoin has even really been the issue because SEC is not declaring them a security because it's not. And Bitcoin has been the one that's been progressing environment safe energy. Nothing fuels innovation like necessity. And Bitcoin has needed a lot of power for a long time. And they'll increasingly need more and more power. And increasingly the technology will get better and better. They have ways of collecting the heat from their mining that also contributes to energy. This is just something I'm going to cover. I'm not going to really say much about it. I'm just going to highlight some things and let you guys form your own opinions because I believe that's the most necessary thing. What do you guys think of this? We've been we've been told about Fed now. It's not the definition of CBC. Here's what they say. With Fed now, you can make payments, say, on your mortgage, ideally within seconds, You can send funds on the due date rather than having to plan several days out for an online payment to clear or up to a week for a check to be processed. Think of it as a platform that will transfer your dollar online the same way popular money apps transfer funds. The promise of FedNow is that it will allow financial institutions to make those transfers happen between bank accounts and in the blink of an eye. YouTube and TikTok and other social media that FedNow will replace the dollar with a digital currency. These claims are false. The FedNow service is neither a form of currency nor a step towards eliminating any form of payment, including cash. There are 35 banks and credit unions, as well as 16 payment processing services providing that are participating in a soft launch. The Fed said in a news release. It's really suspicious. Just tell me what you think. Financial institutions participating in FedNow can opt into different services within the system. They might, for example, elect to send funds back and forth across the financial institutions or choose to receive funds only. They can also opt into settlement services, transfers, and high-dollar credit transactions called liquidity management transfers. I don't think that when a CBDC comes, it will necessarily have a blockchain. The banks will want their privacy for security reasons, as government always does. So I don't see it as an open blockchain. I most definitely see it as private. 
I don't even know if it'll be a blockchain because blockchain is not necessary for instant payments. HBAR is a native currency for the Hedera network. Essentially, Hedera is a DLT network that fundamentally differs from Bitcoin, Ethereum, blockchains, but services the same purposes. It's based on the security and validation mechanisms considered more efficient than the applied on the blockchain networks. So like that, you can have instant payments without the blockchain. Hedera implements DLT on hashtag instead of blockchains. Hashgraph technology offers a practical alternative to blockchains for leveraging an open ledger system. The technology presents multiple benefits compared to blockchains. For example, there is no mining, meaning the environmental effect of using it is significantly minimized. In the case of Hedera, the carbon negative. It also boasts of lower fixed transaction fees of 0. 0.0001 per transaction, where fees do not fluctuate with HBAR price. Moreover, Hashgraph-based networking can implement a DLT with the same security and anonymity perks as blockchain-based ledgers, with added advantages such as improved performance and higher processing capability capacity. That's another thing with cash. The reason why we, the reason we might want cash more than cryptocurrency or whatever, more than, you know, digital money. CBDC is that you can remain anonymous when it comes to cash. You can buy something, sell something without the government ever directly knowing. There's ways of finding out in many cases, but it's less trackable than digital money of any kind. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, there's a ledger, it's pseudo anonymous. You would be able to be tracked with cash, gold, silver, whatever. There's only so much they can, they can really track you. When you have people like Elizabeth Warren talking about how the fraud can be and how these people are working money laundry, money laundry is incredibly more easy when it comes to cash cash. Rules for thee but not for me refers to emergency automatic idomatic phrase that is used by people to express their disregard for certain regulations. It is often a, in critique of politicians who always seem to break their own laws. The origin is not known. It started emerging in the late 2000s and early 2010s with certain articles, posts, and memes referring to it. The phrase became viral in 2022, Darren, as many people decided to exempt themselves from the rules and regulations made for halting. Rules for thee, not for me, was frequently referred to in debates, articles, and various sources. It was first defined on Urban Dictionary on December 3rd, 2020. Rules for thee and not for me is going to be a big issue when it comes to government because we've seen how regulators will always make themselves above the law. And with the way for them to put a veil over their purchases, but also reveal our purchases, they would love a CBDC. Rules for thee and not for me also reminds me, of course, of the animal farm. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. You guys haven't read the story. It's about animals that took over a farm, and every animal is created equal in the beginning, but slowly some get more rights than others. In other words, I know what's best for you. In other words, I know what's best for you, better than you do yourself. Many totalitarian regimes begin in such a way. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Is the crystallization of such an attitude and the totalitarian nature of the this approach is neatly embodied by the fact that this one slogan replaces seven slogans derived from old major's original idealistic vision for the equal society, a vision that has, by the end of the novel, novel been so thoroughly corrupted. Many societies will start off with having people equal, but those in power always get their leg up and they start getting more and more power, more and more say and taking it from you. I believe with cryptocurrency, we have an opportunity. I believe that it is more sound than the digital currency we have through debit cards and banks. Banks, I believe, have collected and consolidated power, and I believe that we need decentralization. It is so important to me that decentralization is a thing. And I know that manipulation, I know that power corrupts and that things will happen always moving towards corruption, always towards chaos. But I believe that we have to keep fighting for this. And when I say fighting, obviously nonviolence. Obviously, we do not want anyone hurt in any way. 
there are a way to accomplish things legally, safely, and that's what we have to always aim for, in my opinion, and how I direct this channel. So, to collect everything that I've really said is that I think that we are going to move more digital. I believe that Bitcoin is one of the many currencies that are cryptocurrencies that have the ability to benefit all of society instead of just a select few. I believe that as we move towards this, we got to continue to make steps. I believe that politicians and different people in power at the banks and everything, they're, they're going to position themselves and they're going to frame it as in we need the CBDC. And even YouTubers that are against CBDCs, I continually hear saying, we're going to get a CBDC. It's going to happen. Get used to it. I do not like that frame. <laughs> I do not like that frame. I need the only way for people to defeat such ideas is if we educate. And that's what I'm aiming to do right here. I want you all to be educated that even though everyone in power, everyone with all the money, everyone with all the riches want to have the control over the money, then it doesn't have to happen that way. When you look at the Amish community, something I commonly, com, commonly reference is that they did not have to sign up for the draft. And for a long time, they didn't have to pay taxes because there was 200,000 of them and they all stood in solidarity. They, I mean, I don't know of wars that Amish had to have to fight for this. They stood in solidarity, as far as I know, peacefully. And I think that's what needs to be done. Too many of us have allowed the seed to be planted that we are going to see BC. When you hear something over and over again, it gets implanted and the seed grows and it becomes. And I do not think we have to have a CBC. I think we can resist and we can progress. And we can have crypto. I, I believe in freedom and I think we'll have freedom. That's what I'm calling it. That's why I'm casting out. That's the seed this channel is casting out is we don't have to have the CBC. We can have freedom. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And if you did learn something, if you like this, if you support the ideas that are presented on this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to the comments, and I look forward to seeing you personally in them. It's crypto dream. I cast my dreams upon your feet. Let's see what reality we can make.